Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I'm Coach Castle and we're doing another 20 questions today. Try to get it done in 20 minutes, but I do have a tendency to go over, but I'll go as quick as I can, guys. So don't expect elaborate explanations. So uh, let's get into it. Go ahead. Do contraceptives make you fat? And if they... Uh, okay. Do contraceptives make you fat? And if they do, how do con counteract that effect to lose weight. I'm sorry. Do contraceptives make you fat? And if they do, how to counteract that effect to lose weight? So, obviously this is from a woman. And yes and no. There are many different kinds of contraceptives. And all women have different varying effects with different varying contraceptives. All contraceptives affect your hormones and of course your hormones affect your whole body including weight regulation. If you are taking a contraceptive and it's causing either water retention or weight gain, try a different contraceptive. If all, I think that there's 76 of them, if all 76 of them do not work, uh, contact me again. But it's, it's very likely that you simply have one which is reacting to your body in a negative way. Uh, that being said, you can't break the laws of thermodynamics, so regardless of your contraceptive affecting your hormones, you will not gain weight if you are eating less calories than you're burning. And that's the end of the story. There is no negating that science. You're simply eating too much. Since I have diabetes, I have always had very low energy levels and no desire or motivation to exercise as much as I would like to. Is there any way to motivate myself? So, since you have diabetes, once again, your hormone levels are going to be different. You're going to be taking insulin shots, a um, couple other things as well. Um, you have to be much more careful with your diet, as you know, in regards to exercise and weight loss. You have to very closely monitor your glucose levels uh, before and after exercise. Uh, for most people, it's important because we'll have a crash if we exercise and de deplete all the glucose in our muscles and then we don't replenish it. We'll just kind of like crash and you know go to sleep. In your case, it's a lot more detrimental than taking a nap. So you have to very closely monitor those two things. Immediately following exercise, you want to have more carbohydrates than most people. You want to have um, quick digesting carbohydrates. You know what those are if you have diabetes. Um, and of course, in regards to weight loss, as I just mentioned with thermodynamics, you can't break the laws of thermodynamics. Again, even if you have diabetes, it doesn't make a difference. You have to basically just eat less food, less calories than you're burning. You have to be exercising correctly, and you have to be, you know, sleeping, eating correctly, all these things. All, it's all a balancing act. And you having diabetes, you having uh, hormone problems, you having a thyroid dysfunction, it in no way, shape, or form nullifies thermodynamics. It doesn't change your anatomy. All these rules still apply to you. It's just a little bit harder. That's all. At what point during exercise do you start burning fat? At what point in exercise do you start burning fat? Um, I suppose the technical answer to that would be as soon as you've run out of glucose in your muscles. So after your body has digested and used up the glucose stored in its muscles, and then it, after it's used up and digested the carbs in your stomach, then you will begin using fat. The problem for that is for most people that is a significant amount of time. Typically you only find um, endurance athletes, uh, swimmers, long distance runners, things like that. They're, they're the only ones who really deplete completely their glucose and stores and then start tapping into fat stores. Most people simply don't do cardio. Uh, they don't work out that long. How did you start to get into biomechanics? How did I get into biomechanics? Um, <laughs> So, when I first heard about biomechanics, I actually thought it was, uh, it was really stupid. I didn't think it made any sense. I, um, I watched a couple, let me see if I can get this right, I want to make sure I get this right actually. So, I was, 
I was watching Rick Drayson um, podcasts, and a gentleman named Doug Brignoli came on the podcast and started talking about biomechanics. And everything that he said was completely against everything I had previously heard. At this point in time, I was uh, a strong man and I was a power lifter. And I was interested in moving really big amounts of weight. I was interested in squatting huge, deadlifting huge, bench pressing huge, getting big arms, getting bigger, getting jacked, all these, all these things. And uh, I was going about it in a really stupid way. So I was getting stronger, but my body wasn't getting any bigger. Uh, my diet, same thing, was it was really good, but I wasn't building muscle. And I couldn't figure out why I had stalled, why my progress wasn't moving. So I started literally just trying a few of these things that this gentleman mentioned, and uh, I found that they were really hard, they worked really good, and I, I didn't really have to use much weight, and then the next day I was just destroyed. So I started looking more into it and learning more about it. I contacted Doug Brignoli, I got his book, I started watching his videos, then I took different courses to get certified in biomechanics. Uh, long story short, it's... I mean, I couldn't be happier. I learned. I wish I'd learned it at a, a younger age. Actually, it's just the information wasn't really available then, I guess. But uh, that's how I got into biomechanics, anyways. Why do you think you're right and everyone else is wrong? Oh, that's a right in a row, huh? <laughs> so why do I think I'm right and everyone else is wrong? I assume you're referring to biomechanics because that's the thing that most people call me out on. But I would also say that, um, generally speaking. I don't say I'm right unless I firmly believe I'm right. I won't have a conversation or an argument about something unless I fully 100% believe the facts that support my case. And even going into that, you have to leave some wiggle room because you could be wrong. So never think that you're just 100% right about anything. Now when it comes to dieting and when I talk about how to lose weight, you can't freaking argue with me unless you know something about thermodynamics and biochemistry and, and food that I don't, which you could, but if you did, you still wouldn't argue these facts with me as they're scientifically proven and everyone knows them. If it's about biomechanics, you can't argue biomechanics with me. I don't care if you think the squat is superior. I don't care if your dad or your coach or your personal trainer says you have to deadlift and bench press. They're wrong. End of story. It's about efficiency. If you want to be the most efficient, save the most time, build the most muscle the fastest, you have to have the perfect exercises. How do I know that they're perfect? It's because every muscle can only have one perfect exercise. And when you understand physics and how they affect anatomy, and your anatomy is not different than mine, and physics affects you the same way they affect me, then you do know and you can arrogantly say you know the perfect way to do something. If it's about psychology, I know what I know and I say what I know, and I don't talk about areas that are not my expertise. If it's about evolution, it's the same thing. I know what I know and I don't talk about areas that are outside my expertise. If anyone would ever like to debate me about anything I've ever said, I would love to, because I love educating people and making other people look like idiots. So, moving on. What is more important when trying to lose weight, cardio or diet? What's more important when trying to lose weight, cardio or diet? Um, I, I guess I would say diet. But that being said, they're both very important and you can't lose weight productively, efficiently and healthily without doing both. Uh, but that being said, let me put it in perspective for you. If you do an hour of cardio, say your cardio is an hour of walking, and you're an average sized person, let's say you burned 150, maybe 200 calories, okay? An hour of walking. You eat one Hershey's chocolate bar, you just got 250 calories. Okay, that took you about 10 seconds to do, and you just spent an hour walking to burn less than that. If your diet is in check and you're eating low calorie foods that are satiating and they keep you full, you're not going to keep eating and shoving random high calorie things in your mouth. If you're not doing that, you're going to be losing more calories. If you're doing cardio and you're dieting correctly, again, you're having you know, less food, so to speak, it's going to be a synergistic effect. They're going to work together. It's going to be better. 
you're going to burn more calories, you're going to do it healthier, safer, more effectively, and faster. I mean, that's the short answer. Why do you care if other people exercise how they want to exercise? Why do I... Say it again? Why do I care. care if other people exercise how they want to exercise? I don't care. It, it makes no difference to me. You guys listening... Uh, I am efficient expert. I believe in managing my time efficiently. I believe in training like an intelligent person for most efficiency, building my muscle the fastest way, the most efficient way. I don't care if I look strong. I don't care if I'm squatting hundreds of pounds. I don't have a big ego to be showing off for the gym. I don't have those uh, concerns in my life. I'm concerned with building high quality, healthy muscle as fast as possible. I'm concerned with my clients who are elderly, not damaging their bodies with ridiculous exercises which are counterproductive. I'm concerned with my injured clients, getting them healthy quickly and efficiently, none of which involves resistance bands, none of which involves squatting, none of which involves any of these exercises that most personal trainers will recommend. I'm involved with I want results from my clients as fast as humanly possible. If you like to squat, that's great. If you like to squat and you want to have big muscular legs, you're going to take a lot longer to get those big muscular legs squatting. Okay? Just telling you right now, if you want big biceps, big triceps, and that's the reason you go to the gym is to get big arms, and you're performing multiple exercises, all of which are inefficient, you're not going to get big arm. Well, you will, but it's going to take you two, three, four, five times as long as it's going to take me or my clients. So continue exercising however you like. Continue following the crowd. Continue enjoying your workouts. I don't even know what that means. I do workouts for results. Continue doing whatever you like. It's not my life. It's not my client's life. You can take as long as you want to get to the finish line. I want to get there quick and then start another race. How many days a week should you do cardio? Uh, how many days a week should you do cardio would depend on the person, their goals, their body weight. I mean, that's really very subjective. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. For those of you who exercise, for those of you who work out and you do not do cardio, you're an idiot. Why am I saying that? Because your heart is a muscle. How do you train your heart? With cardio. Your heart is the thing keeping you alive, by the way. Therefore, your heart is the most important muscle on your body, not your freaking bicep, not your legs, not your back, not your chest. Your heart is the most important. In my opinion, you should be doing cardio five or six days a week or seven days a week. You should be doing it just about every day. Now, when I say cardio, though, that doesn't mean you need to be running an hour every day. It doesn't need to be biking an hour every day. It means you should be taking a walk for half an hour to an hour, you could go for a 20 minute jog, you could do a quick bike ride, you could go walk around Home Depot shopping for 30 minutes. I mean, as long as it's continuous walking, I don't care. You should be doing something for your heart every day. If you exercise and you're lifting weights, that's not cardio. No, it doesn't count as your cardio for the day. No, it doesn't. I don't care how intensely you're training. No, it's not cardio. Do them separately. They're two different things. What is the best form of, of cardio to lose weight? What is the best form of cardio to lose weight? Whatever cardio you will keep doing <laughs> is the simple answer. So if you're a swimmer and you enjoy swimming, make swimming your cardio. If you were a swimmer and I told you to start running five miles a day, how long are you going to keep running five miles a day? You're not going to want to do it. You're not going to be interested in it. You're going to be sick of it. It's going to hurt your feet, okay? If you're a 500-pound person and you need to start losing weight, why don't you start just by walking up the stairs? Why don't you start by walking around the block? Why don't you do that every day to build the habit and then increase the distance? The best cardio to lose weight is just like the best diet. It's whatever you are able to stick to that gives you results. End of story. The best cardio, if you want to say the best cardio overall in general, I would say would be an incline treadmill at a maximum incline with a slow speed and you're just walking up a high incline treadmill without holding onto the damn arms. 
you're just walking up a hill basically you don't have handles on a hill so I would say that's the best cardio because it's extremely low impact it uses the most muscles um, it's very hard cardiovascular wise and it doesn't take much time to get your ass kicked I've taken your advice and make my schedule for myself however i'm complete completely unable to stick to it please help oh my god I, I didn't understand that at all sorry i've taken your advice and made a schedule for myself however i'm completely unable to stick to it please help well it's good that you made a schedule that's the first step if you're not following your schedule there's multiple reasons for that one, you've made your schedule a prison, meaning your schedule has now become something that you are forced to do this, you are forced to do that, you're forced to do this, and then the rest of the day you're going to do whatever you want, because who wants to do all those freaking things? And then because of that attitude, none of them are getting done. Or, you've made your schedule far too difficult. You've put too many things on your schedule. You've made the things that you need to do into these big giant monsters that you you don't want to do, again, because you've made them too big. Say you put on your schedule, I'm going to do 30 minutes of cardio today, but you hadn't done any cardio before that. Do you really think you're going to just put on your shoes and go do 30 minutes of cardio? No. You have to start with five minutes of cardio. Start there. The problem with everybody, including their schedules, is their ego gets in the way. Oh, I'm a badass. I'm going to wake up at 4 in the morning. I'm going to do 30 minutes of cardio, do my meal prep, have a workout, make my blah, 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 do this, that, and then go to work. And then after work, I'll do this, that, and the other. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way unless you've slowly trained yourself to do that over a period of months or years. You don't just suddenly wake up a completely different person and start banging out the world like a champion. That's not how it works. You have to drop your ego, set an acceptable schedule, with acceptable things, five, ten minute tasks that you're not used to doing, which you want to start doing. Make them small enough that you'll actually do them. And set your schedule up so you have time to relax as well. Don't just have it all work. That doesn't make any sense. You need time to relax and decompress too. Schedule times. I'll just read this one. I see. Oh, I see why. What is the difference in training styles for an ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph? I think I am leaning more towards ectomorph. How should this affect my training? Okay, so uh, what this person is talking about, for those of you who don't know, is uh, ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph are different um, body types, or I guess you'd say body styles. They are a real thing, however, they're not so clean cut as that. There's not three styles of bodies. All of those three, everyone in the world is a combination of those three. I mean, you're, you're a mix of them. You're a mutt. So, it's not possible to be a full endomorph or a full ectomorph or a full mesomorph. Each one of those is a different category. Um, it seems to me that whenever somebody asks me a question like this, they're kind of looking for a cheat code. They're, they're looking for a secret or something. I'm an ectomorph, uh, therefore I should be eating more calories and lifting heavier weights. I'm a mesomorph, so I should stay away from doing cardio so much and do extra sets and reps. I, I mean, whatever it is. Let me tell you how this works. I, I kind of already covered this in, in multiple other areas, but I'll say it for this as well. Regardless of your body style or your body type, you still have the same anatomy as everybody else. You still have to perform the exercises correctly with maximum intensity. You have to recover. You have to sleep. You have to eat good. And if you do that, you will grow. If you don't do that, you will not grow. It's That's that. That is it, and that is everything. Stop trying to make it complicated with these different classifications of people. It makes no difference if you're a mesomorph and you you're, need to eat more calories. It, or you're an endomorph and you have to... It, just, it doesn't matter. You're overcomplicating things. You have to train with intensity with the pro proper movement patterns, which again, the same for everyone in the world. There's no people who do not have these proper movement patterns. You have to diet. You have to diet in a way that you'll stick to. And you have to be getting enough protein to build the damn muscle. If you do that, you grow. 
It doesn't matter what kind of body you have. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. It doesn't matter if you're a child or a 90-year-old man. It doesn't matter if you're 500 pounds or you're 100 pounds. It doesn't matter the size of your bones or the composition of your... It just doesn't matter. Okay, That's basic, basic laws of anatomy, physics, and thermodynamics. Does not matter. Stop making it complicated. Why does it seem like you always get very angry with personal trainers? Aren't they just doing their job? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Answer this quickly, huh? Okay. Um, why do I always get mad at personal trainers if they're just doing their job? I made a whole video about this, so I'm not going to get too much into it. Here's my problem with personal trainers who are just doing their job. Also with coaches, online gurus, and anyone else. None of these people have any basic understanding of biomechanics and they have no understanding of diet. What do I mean when I say that? I mean I have met dozens and hundreds of these personal trainers. I've received emails from dozens and hundreds more and I've spoken with even more than that on the phone. None of these personal trainers have any understanding of how exercise actually works. None of them have any understanding of what exercises actually target what muscles. None of them understand anything about the basic resistance curve or how gravity affects your anatomy. None of them even could tell you the basic muscles being used by most fucking exercises. They have no understanding of diet. They don't. They don't explain it to you. They tell you some bullshit that they saw in magazines or online or they read in a book. Okay? They, they no. I don't like personal trainers if they're just doing their job because they only have two jobs and that is to understand how your body works to help you build muscle or to help you lose weight through dieting and cardio and I would love for someone to tell me how they can do that effectively and properly if they don't understand those two subjects how can they do it and I would love any of you personal trainers to contact me and explain to me how you know better than I do I haven't met one yet so please, somebody, educate me, someone debate me, somebody enlighten me as to why I should have any respect for you people doing your best when you haven't even taken a couple months to learn some basic skills that is literally your only job. What's your favorite diet food? My favorite diet food? Um, I don't really have one, I guess. Um, uh, peanut butter and banana sandwich, I guess. Yes. I, I like peanut butter and banana sandwiches. They're, I mean, I eat it all the time, but I'm not, I don't know. I, I eat it when I'm dieting. I even eat it pre, pre competitions and shit. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I guess it's just, I like it. How do I know if I'm one healthy weight? How, what? How do I know if, how do I know if I'm an unhealthy weight? Um, well, I guess that would depend on your definition. So, if you go to the hospital and you see a doctor and you're 30 pounds overweight, he might still tell you you're, if they say this, they give you a thumbs up, they say, oh, you're within range, you're healthy. If you're 30 pounds of fat on your body, you're not healthy. Don't be body positive about this. Don't love and accept yourself for who you are. No, you're fucking fat. And you're unhealthy. And it has to go. It's pretty simple. If you are asking the question, am I too fat? You're too fat. There's your answer. Next. What... What? Oh my God. <laughs> what would be your advice to someone new to the gym? What would be your advice to someone new to the gym? Uh, I guess if you're new to the gym as in you've never been in a gym in your life, or you're new to the gym as in you're just getting back to going to the gym, my advice would be the same advice that I give literally every human being I come across. Learn how to do the proper exercises. There's only 23 or 24 of them. Once you've learned them, you never have to do any other exercises again. Learn about diet. It's going to take you a couple weeks. 
and then do not do anything you see the other people in that gym doing. Do not copy anything you see them doing because nine, not even nine times out of ten, 99 times out of a hundred, they're freaking wrong. They're going to give you bad advice and if you copy them, you're going to go nowhere. How late is okay to eat if I'm trying to lose weight? How late is it okay to eat if I'm trying to lose weight? I don't care. Uh, again, that's very subjective. Uh, I eat my last meal just before I go to bed, usually 30 minutes before I go to bed. I eat my first meal the second I wake up in the morning. I do not fast, except the you know, few hours that I sleep, I guess, is fasting. I don't fast. I don't intermediate fast. I don't understand why people have a time limit on when they can stop eating. You are not a gremlin. You're not going to turn into a monster if you eat after 10 p.m. It's about calories. Let me just keep saying this, guys. It is actually this simple. If you're allowed to have 2,000 calories in a day and you have five meals and those five meals totaled 1,700 calories and it's time to go to bed and you're allowed 300 more calories, if you want to eat 300 more calories, if you're not feeling hungry, there's no reason to do it. You can just leave it off. No big deal. Don't force yourself to. Don't do that. Eating before bed is not going to affect anything in a bad way. It's not going to make you gain weight overnight. It's not going to, it's nothing. It's not going to do anything. I eat every night before I go to bed because if I don't, I wake up in the middle of the night very hungry. So I eat a very heavy protein meal before I go to bed. That's me. You can do it too. I don't know where this this bedtime eating thing came from. It makes just no sense at all. Period. End of story. How do I train my inner chest? Um, how do I train my inner chest? The same way you would train your chest. So, this is again another one of those uh, questions somebody will ask because you'll hear personal trainers talk about training your inner chest. Let me explain what they're referring to when they say inner chest. They're talking about this, this line right here, and they're talking about they want to get more definition there. So, two things. One, your chest muscles, just like every other muscle on your body, have an all or none principle. Meaning, either all of the muscle fibers contract, or none of them do. You cannot contract half your muscle fibers, but not the other half. You can't contract one end of your muscle fibers, but not the other end of your muscle fibers. It doesn't work that way. It's all or nothing. So this person who is so-called trying to train their inner chest is just trying to train their chest. And I would assume that they have too much fat on their body or their chest is too small. Therefore, they can't see the cuts and the definition in their inner chest. There's no such thing as an inner chest. I don't, again, I don't even understand that. I know what they're saying, but your pectoral muscle fibers originate on your upper arm and then they cross across in a fan shape and they connect here on your sternum okay that's it there's no middle end left side right side it's it's one long ass rope and then multiply that by a million and those are your muscle fibers all of those ropes have to pull together at the same time you cannot target one piece of the rope it's such a ridiculous uneducated statement carry on what do you think about group fitness classes what do I think about group fitness classes? I think if it gets you up and moving, excellent. I think if you are being, if you think you're being productive in a group fitness class, I think you are very mistaken. You, I've never seen a group fitness class where you're actually able to get proper advice because there's 30 of you. Uh, I've never seen a group fitness class where anyone was performing any exercise or movement even close to accurately. I've also never seen a group fitness class where they had any level of intensity whatsoever. You're not doing anything. Uh, I would call it moderate cardio at best. My thoughts. What's a good workout meal and how soon should I eat before the gym? What's a good pre-workout meal and how soon should I eat before the gym? Um, I a good pre-workout meal would be something with quick digesting carbohydrates 
not too much protein and not too much fat. Um, an example would be maybe something like a, a protein waffle, a toast with jelly, a cup of milk, I mean, and you want to eat that 30 minutes to an hour uh, before you work out. Um, just because you don't want to have a bunch of food in your stomach when you're working out. Blood actually goes there and it, it makes it worse. But, um, and, and fruits, about fruits, like yeah, fruits a banana? And, oh yeah, bananas, fruits, again, but just not too much protein, not too much fat. It'll, it'll screw up with your workout a little bit. And you want to have it 30 minutes to an hour. But anyway, guys, we're going we're gonna to call this an end for the video today. Uh, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And um, see you in the end of the video. I'll cut this up a little bit too so you guys can check these out individually. Everybody have a great day and stay safe.